All right, uh, hey guys, tonight uh, we've got a review that I've been putting off for a long time, uh, mostly because I don't really know how to do it. All right, so we're gonna look at the uh, barrel and hatchet training group chest rig. Um, so this is the Gen 2, all right? And this is gonna be kind of part review and part managing expectations uh, and understanding what, you, what you're getting into with a uh, quality kit. All right, so this is Gen 2, uh, and then I also happen to have, uh, because again, the viewers are awesome, uh, the Gen 1. So uh, Gen 1 was put out by Barrel and Hatchet uh, Training Group, and the chest rig was designed by my buddy Devin at uh, Molly Monkey Tactical. All right, and he's a one-man shop, if you, if you don't know that, and you get frustrated with lead times, uh, one-man shop. Designed this thing uh, for Barrel and Hatchet, and they they put it out for pre-order, and they sold a good number of them, uh, and they ended up actually selling too many of them. Uh, so when we're talking about managing expectations, this sold for $300, which $300 to some people is a ton of money to spend on a chest rig. But as I break down the features on this, you're going to quickly understand just how much work went into uh, putting these together to the extent that the deal uh, kind of fell apart, right? I'm not, I don't have any bad blood with anybody. Uh, I, I traded for the Gen 2 from a friend uh, and then got loaned this one, right? So I don't have any money on the line, um, but I can understand how some of the initial buyers might've been frustrated. Uh, $300 chest rig, this is an absolute steal uh, at $300, which is why it didn't really come to fruition. I think there were about 10 of these made uh, versus the Gen 2, that kind of filled the gap. So when Devin couldn't keep up uh, with with filling those pre-orders, uh, it got shifted to a different manufacturer and the design changed a lot. Uh, so this is Gen 2 that went to most of the pre-order buyers. I don't know the inner workings of, of payment, if the, the cost dropped or anything like that. I think they still sell for $300 these days. It's been a few months since I checked. But uh, it is a completely different chest rig and the same chest rig at the same time. So uh, we'll go through uh, Gen 1 and then what, what Gen 2 ended up looking like and kind of the way features had to fall off to make it realistic uh, at that price point. So hopefully this is interesting. If not, I totally get it, right? Maybe four people watch this, but kit costs money, uh, especially the more uh involved it gets to make so uh get them both on the table and take a look at them all right so looking at the uh, barrel and hatchet chest rig gen one uh so i remember back when this was kind of getting brought to market and when devin was working on the design and he actually hit me up a couple of times about it he was really really proud of this thing and as he should be it is an incredible chest rig a lot of thought went into it. It has a lot of features in it. And uh, Devin quickly realized that, that it was probably too many features for kind of a, a mass release, right? If he came to me today and said, hey, man, I got this chest rig. I want to put it out for $300. I would absolutely buy it. It's worth every penny at $300. Um, and the, the few people that, that got the Gen 1 as prescribed... Uh, they they got a, a solid bargain. All right, so let's uh let's kind of work through the features on here. It is very much mirrored um, left and right. So uh, we'll just cover the one side so that I don't struggle too much at keeping this all in frame. All right, so looking at the front, you've got uh, double mag pouches. So you've got a capacity of six magazines here. And uh, even the magazine pouches are pretty unique. So uh, Devin came up with this uh, closure method. It, I'm sure he pulled inspiration from other places, uh, but it's a pull tab. So you just pull down and it releases. So you've got this tuck tab here that engages with a slot in this reinforced webbing. And if you had magazines in there, it would very much uh, keep some good tension on there and, and stay tight. All right. Uh, it's also uh, got some shock cord retention there, so you can kind of dial how tight you want your magazine pouch. If you only wanted one magazine, you could absolutely crank it down to the point that it'll fit fine. Uh, you've got mesh on the bottom of the magazine pouches, so you have some drainage there. You actually have mesh on the bottom of all of the pouches all the way across here. 
Um, <clears throat> but there you go. You got your three uh, double magazine pouches. There's some interesting uh, work done in the flaps here. So you've got, you can, you can drop tension on your magazine pouches, which I don't think I've ever seen that done before. Uh, but you could, you know, run 20 round mags. You could probably fit some 308 mags in there. I actually got one handy. Let's see how that works. 308 P mag in here. And we can engage the tuck tab, I believe. Yep, so a tuck tab will engage on a, uh, what are these, 25 rounds? Oh, 25 rounds. Yeah, P mag 25, 308 uh, with Ranger plates. So not a small mag by any stretch. Uh, so you can fit one of those in there, two uh, 30 round uh, M4 P mags, no problem. If you're running shorter uh, 308, you can cinch some of that height down. Shorter 556, you can you can make that work no problem. All right, really really interesting uh, mag pouches, and and you can see like the level of work that went into just the mag pouches, where we've got placards coming out that are just you know three cell elastic placards. Devin's got mesh bottoms on here. Webbing on the front that's reinforced with, with shot cord. You've got some gutted 550 cord sewn in there to retain that. You've got one of the most complex flaps I've ever seen with the, the reinforced tuck tab, the, the shot cord uh, drawstring on there to, to suck up some of that height if you need to. These are really, really involved uh, mag pouches. And I'm not just hyping this up because it's Devin. Like this is there's a lot of thought that went into this, and I'm sure if you ask any of the, the Taylor Raid guys, uh, Axel, any, you know, Extreme Gear Labs, any of them, they'll tell you, like, this, there is a ton of work that went into making these chest rigs. Uh, you know, outside of the, the magazine pouches, you've got radio pouches here. Uh, to my understanding, Barrel and Hatchet is run by some uh, tack peas, so they definitely wanted... Uh, radio capability in here and it's kind of an interesting uh, radio pouch so you've got the sewn elastic on the sides here uh, as well as some shot cord retention and kind of this ladder for the shot cord so you could you could tweak this as much as you wanted you could get more back and forth going on there to get more coverage uh, but it's it's kind of a, a limitless volume aside from the uh, the elastic there uh, but you could fit just about any radio you wanted in here. I don't have an MPU-5 uh, or a 163. Not that I would want a 163. But if, if any of you guys are feeling squirrely and want to 3D print one, so I've got one for test fitting, I would be happy to try that out. We can throw a, a 152 in here so you can see what that looks like. The 152 fills that out pretty nicely, but you can see like the the sides, there's more room to grow there. Uh, so you could fit one of the bulkier, you could fit an MPU-5 in there, I'm pretty sure, uh, or 163. And then you've got the, the elastic cord on the top there. Uh, with a toggle, you can take as much slack out of that as you want. Uh, or you can you can completely you know loosen that to get it out of the way with that nice low, fo low profile toggle there. See if I can get that back in without looking like a dummy. There we go. Uh, you've got a toggle on the bottom to take the slack out of the sides. Mesh again, and the sides are all vented, uh, so you can you don't have to worry about your your radio overheating. And I'm pretty sure you know if you had all sorts of cable routing and stuff going on, you could probably weasel the battery out the side if you wanted to change the battery without taking the the radio out of the pouch. Uh, so you've got one of those on each side. Oh, all that work on the toggle just came out. All right. And then uh, off to the side of that, you've got a fairly uh, involved GP pocket. Again, mesh on the bottom, which complicates uh, the manufacturing. You've got uh, kind of a almost a cry style flap there with uh, two 
elasticized lid or uh, lip pockets there. They're, they're bellowed, right? You don't see bellows a whole lot. It takes extra work. Uh, nice closure there. And then uh, a pretty good size uh, utility pocket there. You probably fit, you fit a hundred, hundred ounce saw pouch in there, no problem uh, with room to spare. Uh, this is a, a fairly big chest rig too, I should say. Uh, and then a nice zipper closure on that, double zipper closure. Uh, behind all that, you've got a Velcro pocket. So you've got several Velcro pockets here. So you've got one that kind of encompasses the up to the edge of the radio pocket and the GP pocket. You could fit a side plate in there if you wanted to. So if you're using this kind of like a, um, almost like the ABS detachable chest rig, you could put side plate in there. I don't know how ideal that would be, uh, but you could. And then behind the mag pouches, you have another Velcro pocket that opens up. Uh, you've got some webbing sewn in there. It looks like it's sewn all the way down, so you can't really use that to tether anything. Uh, but another another map type pocket there, and then one on the other edge. Now uh, looking at the back side of this thing, you've got a Velcro field. Again, if you wanted to use it as a, a the world's largest placard, you can. Uh, that would be totally fine. Some of your some of your more streamlined plate carriers take to using a chest rig as a placard really well. Um, on the bottom of the GP pocket, you've got some uh, webbing loops here. I'm not sure what the uh, the intent was there, but you can hang things off of that and whatnot, or just tie off to it if that's what you want to do. Uh, and then you have a uh, X harness here, which I'm sure you could convert to a H harness if you wanted to. Um, but you've got some some molly on there, uh, some folded cordura. Uh, for the body of the, the harness, and then the back strap uh, coming across. And this was thrown in there. I did not notice this. Looks like a streamlined um, shoulder straps. Oh, maybe that's for H harness, if you wanted to use it as an H harness. Right? Um, so very, very, very well done uh, chest rig with a lot of features uh, in it. I'm sure that if you, you went to like a a tactical assault gear type company, um, maybe London Bridge to an extent, you could get something close in in capability for around the same price, but not a one-man shop type product. Like if you asked Extreme Gear Labs or somebody like that to make this thing and you offered them $300, they might laugh in your face. Like there's a lot of work that goes into putting one of these together. And that's not a fault on them. There is a, a ton of work that goes into it. So that was the Gen 1, right? Really, really well thought out product. And then we'll look at the Gen 2, which was kind of the, the oh crap, we didn't realize what we got into. Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, the second set of straps was, it looks like the uh, X harness for the H2, for the Gen 2. All right, so looking at the Gen 2, um, still a, a good chest rig, um, potentially not a $300 chest rig, and it has kind of a different feel to it. Um, all of the, the, the material in the Molly Monkey tactical version, it, it has, a, it has that quality feel to it. I can't, I can't describe it. If you've never had, um, kit made out of that, that type of Cordura, it just has a different feel than some of the super mass produced Cordura. I don't know what drives it. I'm not really sure. I'm not, I'm not quite nerdy enough on material to tell you about it, but you, you just, you can feel the quality difference. I know that's going to sound super cheesy, but it's true. Uh, and somebody, somebody out there will back me up on it. The Cordura that's in this product in the gen two does not have the same feel, uh, Again, I don't know what the difference is. There's just something different about it. And I don't believe it has anything to do with, with it being worn in or, or broken in or anything like that. All right, so on the Gen 2, you still have the same general layout, uh, but you can see very quickly that features fell off the table. All right, so the mag pouches have, have very little of the original feature in them. 
there is some stretch to the, the closure there to kind of fill the same roll as, as the very well thought out lids that Devin put together. You don't have the, the super snazzy closure. You've got surface mount side release buckles there. It kind of feels like there's shock cord running through the lips of these, uh, but it doesn't terminate anywhere. So you can't really tighten it. Um, it just kind of adds bulk if I'm being totally honest. I'm not a fan of these mag pouches. They're, they just don't, they don't feel great. The sizing doesn't feel as well thought out. It, it's, it's, it's more square than rectangular like you would expect for two M4 mags. Uh, the mesh is gone. You've got ground mat switch. Functionally is the same. Uh, it's just not as cleanly done. You get over to the, the radio pockets and you can see functionally they are the same, uh, but in construction they're not. The, the faceplate's a little bit wider. It's all sewn webbing. You can see how it's just a, it's a loop of Cordura that's sewn up here. Like it doesn't go to the bottom of the pouch or the bottom of the, the body of the rig. You can't adjust the side tension on it at all. What you've got is what you've got. Uh, the top functionality is is exactly the same. You've got the toggle uh, and the and the stretchy shot cord there to secure your radio. Uh, and then you get over to the side GP pockets. You'll notice that the face is gone. Uh, the the inside they're not quite as big. Um, you've got raw edge in there, uh, and and you get this like. When you step down in attention to detail, it really shows up in GP pockets because you you don't have that nice clean shape to the pocket anymore. Uh, once you start really cranking these things out, like your corners get a little bit more sloppy. Uh, it doesn't it just doesn't fit things as well. You can see like you really got to work it to get kind of a, a generalized square-ish shape there. Where the ones that, that Devin made, just bam, you throw it on the table and they sit right there. Um, you don't have the Velcro pocket behind any of that. You do behind the, or you don't even have it behind the mags. So you have the, the cancellation piece here for the Velcro, um, but you don't have the pocket there. And then the shoulder straps went from being folded Cordura to being uh, inch and a half webbing, uh, which isn't necessarily bad. Uh, it's still still a functional shoulder strap. It's not any weaker. Uh, it's just not the same kind of quality there because it's, you know, you cut your webbing to size and bam, you're done. Um, which may be totally fine. Uh, it may just be more work than it's worth to do the folded Cordura, but it's color matched to the rest of the rig. It's, it's nice. Uh, this is a H harness off the bat, which I kind of, I prefer H harnesses over X harnesses uh, all day. Uh, you still have the the webbing loops under the uh, the utility pockets, which now that I see they carried that over to Gen 2, I'm really curious what the intent was there uh, because it was clearly important enough to bring it over. Um, you still have uh, a back strap. You don't have the, the attention to detail. Devin had the sewn in uh, one loop to help police up the excess. You don't have that on this one. Uh, you know, I, I hate to do it, but... If, if I had taken part of the pre-order and bought the Gen 1 for $300 and then this is what I ended up getting, I would be rather upset. Um, this, is, this is very much a, a entry-level feeling chest rig um, that in many cases I, I'm not a fan of, aside from it not feeling as well made um, and the material being different. It's just not as not as cleanly done by any stretch. Uh, the body of this thing is all folded over, like a bottom seam all the way around here would have made, would have cleaned that up a lot, and it would have felt better, you know, right off the bat because you would have taken out that that kind of bulk that forms because there's no nothing holding it together there, right? You can see how I can I can push that out. Um, bottom seam would have made a nice crisp corner there. I know it doesn't. It doesn't really matter, right? But it kind of does at the same time. It's not it's not a three hundred dollar plate uh, chest rig. You go from being a, a super good bargain at three hundred dollars to where where did my money go 
on this one. But that's not a slight against Barrel and Hatchet or Devin or anybody involved in this. It's just, it was an unfortunate series of events that led to that, right? It was the, the complexity of the original design was not originally appreciated. Um, and Devin will openly admit that. Um, and I asked him beforehand, it was like, hey, can I kind of tell, tell this story? And he said, yes. Um, so no bad blood between anybody there. Just unfortunate the way it worked out, especially with Devin being a one-man shop. Um, I will always wish him all the best in, in his business. And I, I hope I haven't steered anybody away from him because um, he's just a super good dude. And, and I want people to support him. So I don't know who the OEM was for these. I didn't really care to ask because uh, I don't want to put them on blast. It's almost better I don't know. Uh, but if I had a gear company, I would not use them to uh, to produce my wares, if you will. Um, it's it's very much a, a sew shop that had directions to go off of and didn't doesn't appear to have made gear in the past before. Like the sewing is fine, but the finishing on it and kind of the whys are not there. So that's the barrel and hatchet Gen 2 versus Gen 1 and understanding what your money is going to and why things cost what they do uh, video. So I appreciate your time, guys. Hopefully you got something out of it. If not, you know, I, I always appreciate you guys giving me a chance. So thank you.